so uh, so uh, then let's get started with the uh, next session which we have which is about uh, compound creation tool in dwc now uh, one of the limitation of uh, dw sim uh, with respect to this commercial tools is to is in terms of the compound database okay so uh, basically uh, aspen plus and you know this hisis and pro2 uh, they 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 do have a lot of compounds data compound database with them because you know they they can buy the database and then they can use them and keep everything proprietary but dw sim being an open source uh, you know uh, first of all it cannot uh, buy a database on its own and then make it open source because then that would be terms of i mean uh, violation of terms and policies of that particular company from whom they are buying, buying the database so what dwsim can only uh, give in terms of database is the open source database okay so whenever you see whenever you are uh, trying to add uh, start a new simulation in dwsim all that you can see is uh, all that you can see are chemsep uh, components uh, component from cool uh, cool prop database and then some of the electrolytes okay so other than that uh, we don't have any other component database in dwsim and that's a, a limitation i would say but that doesn't mean that you know uh, if there is if, if 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 a component which we want to use in our flow sheet or we want to use in our simulation uh, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we cannot add that or you know we cannot simulate that in dwsim so what i'm going to demonstrate right now is the compound creation tool that is available in dwsim as to how you can uh, create or import your own compound from dwsim okay so uh, let me share my screen so uh, what uh, daniel has done in terms of uh, compound creation is uh, that uh, he has uh, he has kind of uh, linked uh, two or three uh, online databases with dwsim okay so uh, there are about three online databases that that are linked with dwsim and i am going to show you as to how you can import compounds using those online databases okay okay so you see on uh, under the compound creator uh, wizard you see something called as create new compound so when i click on create new compound uh, compound uh, compound creator window will open and this is something that i have so it will ask me for the name of the compound what it is, what is its cas number formula then uh, molecular structure uh, constant properties and temperature dependent properties things like this okay so uh, ideally if you have all this data with us you know if you have uh, got some uh, data from experimental source or something from a journal we can directly import this data i mean we can directly input this data and then save the compound and use it in our simulation but uh, that that doesn't happen quite often okay so then how do we import how do we uh, create a compound which is not available in the database so uh, first of all let me just uh, show you the three different databases online databases which i was talking about that uh, daniel has linked uh, in with dwc okay so if you see under compound there is a option called import data from online sources and uh, when i click on that i can see there are three options okay one is uh, kdb thermo database one is uh, kmio database and then the other is ddb unifac modfat modfac structure database okay so there are about uh, three different uh, uh, online databases that are linked to dwsim now coming to the first one which is kdb database this is a database by korean company although this database has a lot of compounds but actually uh, it doesn't have many important properties of those compounds okay let's say uh, you take a compound and you can at max find the boiling point or you know melting point or enthalpy that's all that you can find but not beyond that so uh, i mean from my experience what i have seen is that uh, this kdb database is not much of use to me i mean as far as the compounds that i have imported uh, i don't find too many thermodynamic properties associated with those compound so i don't use kdb database but nevertheless you can give it a try of uh, importing compound from kdb database but now what i'm going to demonstrate to you is uh, the uh, remaining two which is kmio database and then the ddb structure database all right so uh, firstly when i when i go to this uh, import data from online sources and then i click on uh, kmio database now when i click on kmio database you have this small pop up which asks for import compound data from kmio online database and then it asks for uh, either the name or cas id or formula of the uh, formula of the uh, particular compound which i want to add okay so uh, what i'll do is uh, let's see i mean uh, uh, the compound that i'm going to add Uh, today is this compound called isoforon if you see 
this is a paper that i have from uh, journal of chemical and engineering data which talks about vle data of cyclohexanol and isoforon okay and if i want to plot this vle diagram of cyclohexanol and isoforon uh, i don't have the i, I, I don't have the uh, isoforon compound in dwsm okay i do have cyclohexanol but i don't have isoforon so to if i want to plot the vle data then i'll have to import this compound isoforon okay so what i'll do is uh, uh, i'll try to first uh, search the compound okay as as you see as you see here that it is asking either for the name cas id or the uh, formula now i don't recommend searching using name or formula because you know uh, we might uh, uh, enter a name called isoforon but then in the database the compound might be with some other uh, name okay it might be with an iupac name then it uh, we, we will not get the desired compound and the same goes with formula okay because it's just that uh, c19h14o the formula but c19h14o formula can be associated with other compounds as well okay a, a different structure but uh, the, uh, the formula remains same so then it becomes then then we will import the wrong compound so what i suggest is that we always uh, add a compound whenever we search a compound or add a compound from online database i recommend you to use the cas id okay because that is something that is unique for every that is only one and unique id for every component okay so that is the reason i would recommend that try to search the compound using its cas id so let's see what is the cas id of isoforon uh cas id of isoforon so this is isoforon its cas id is 78591 okay 78-59-1 so let me enter that number here okay and uh, when i enter the cas id and try to click on next okay it says it is searching the data from online database also please remember that uh, you know you need to be connected to internet while you are trying to do this otherwise it will not be able to fetch the compound okay so uh, please make sure that you are connected to internet while you are trying to import a database from those online sources so if you see uh, yeah you see you see here uh, this is the compound uh, iupac name it has come 2 cyclohexane 1 on 355 trimethyl so this is the iupac name of the compound and if i click on next so uh, had i searched using name or formula i could have seen multiple compound but since i searched using the cas id i saw only one compound one compound because the cas id is unique and that is available for one single compound okay one cas id can be associated with one compound only so uh, you see what are the available data data available for this particular compound in the online database you have uh, molecular weight you have boiling point you have the fusion temperature you have uh, critical points and then you have enthalpy of formation you have gibbs energy of formation the only data that you don't have for this component is entropy of formation but i think it's okay we can go ahead uh, we can see what happens if we import this data okay now if i click on import what will happen is uh, you see as i clicked on import the cas number the molecular weight formula uh, the smiles of the compound everything got filled by itself okay so i'll have to just I'll have to just enter the name of the compound here. So let me enter the compound name. Okay. So now I have entered the name of the compound. Now what I can do is I can go to molecular structure. I'll come to that a bit later. Now let's go and see what are the properties it has come. So if you see, if you click on the tab constant properties, then you can see the uh, the properties of the components, uh, the important properties which are necessary to start the simulation with. Uh, start uh, start with the simulation has been imported now so you have enthalpy of formation you have gibbs energy of formation you have boiling point you have fusion temperature and the critical point so these are the basic uh, uh, thermodynamic properties which must be there in a component in order to add the component into the database okay and also there are temperature dependent properties but what happens basically is that uh, either you can have uh, experimental data T versus CP data, like let's say if you want to uh, perform something on which requires uh, heat capacity, then you'll have to uh, enter T versus CP data. Either you can give an experimental data, or what you can do is you can ask DWSIM to, ex uh, to estimate those data, to estimate those properties from the JOPAC or INFAC method. And for that, we need to import the molecular structure. Okay. So same goes with uh, vapor pressure. Okay, I can either uh, give an experimental data and do the regression to find out a vapor pressure at certain temperature, or else I can ask DWSIM to estimate it from Lee Kessler. Okay, so I leave this. Uh, I leave the temperature dependent property tab as is as it is, because I don't have the experimental data. I am going to see that how this can be estimated using the uh, 
leak Kessler method or using the Joback method. Okay, and this cannot be estimated uh, as and when we want. As and when these properties are needed in a simulation, they will get estimated. Okay, but we will see as to what needs to be done to ensure that okay, these properties get estimated. So what we will do is uh, what is needed for that is that. Uh, uh, we have this tab called molecular structure where we need to where we need to supply the information of the group contribution data okay so uh, i don't know how many of you have uh, have read or gone through this book called uh, properties of gases and liquids by pauling and pronitz okay it's a very famous book uh, where it talks about group contribution method uh, it's a, it's a um, analytical method to uh, it's an analytical method to estimate uh, thermophysical properties of compounds by breaking the compound into uh, small comp small molecules let's say i have uh, this compound uh, isoforon here so what basically group contribution says that first of all break this whole compound into subgroups okay so there are three ch3 groups there is a one c double bond o group things like that so break this whole compound into different subgroups and then every subgroup has certain group uh, certain contribution number which is then used to estimate those particular properties. Okay, so let's say uh, the vapor pressure uh, vapor pressure value for CH three is uh, given as one point seven. Okay, so uh, some analytical formula is used to calculate the vapor pressure of the whole compound by adding the uh, those small small numbers. So let's see how we can import that particular uh, molecular structure. How do you get the particular molecular structure? So once again, I go to compound. And then I click on import data from online sources, and then you go to the third option, which is DDB Unifac Modfac, stru Modfac Structure Database. Okay, so uh, if I if I go there, if I go to the import Unifac Modfac, Modfac Structure Database from DDB Online Database, um, I see that my CAS ID is already fed here. Okay, so after entering the CAS ID, if I just click on Next, it will search if the compound uh, if the compound has got those sub molecules in the DDB database. So you see, uh, the compound has got the sub molecules in the Unifac structure data and the modified Unifac dotment structure data. So I'll not import the modified Unifac dotment structure data. Uh, I'll just import uh, the Unifac structure data only. So if I uh, let it be here, let uh, this checkbox only be uh, ticked, the original Unifac structure data, and I click on import. Okay. So as soon as I click on import, uh, if you now go to the molecular structure and see. You can find the Unifac data of that particular compound as to what are the different subgroups of that compound. What are the different subgroups present in the isoforon compound? So the isoforon compound has got uh, uh, three CH3 group, one CH2 group, one C, one CH2 double bond C group, and then uh, one CH2 CO group. Okay. The same can be done for you know we can do the same in modified Unifac. We can do the same in uh, modified Unifac uh, NIST, and then we can do the same in Joback. Okay. So once that is done, once we uh, once we import the molecular structure of the compound, then what happens is that uh, during simulation, whenever uh, we want to wherever uh, these data are required, the ideal gas capacity or the vapor pressure, this data would be automatically calculated uh, at the background using this molecular structure that we just imported. Okay. I'm not saying that it is going to be entirely correct or entirely wrong, but what I'm I'm just saying you that this is a method to do it. Now, obviously, every simulation, whenever we do this kind of work, uh, it is necessary that we verify the data, verify the simulation result. We just can't blindly import the data and say that okay, we are done with our job because we have created the compound. No, we must verify our result with the experimental data, especially in the cases where uh, we are you know trying to import this. You know, we are when we are trying to import a new compound. Okay. Now, once you have done that, once you have got the uh, molecular structure, once you have got the properties, how do you save this compound and how do you import this compound in simulation? Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, I, once again, I click on compound and there are two options. One is export data to XML database and then uh, another is export data to JSON file. So I click on this option called export data to JSON file. Okay, uh, why I want to export the data to a JSON file? Because uh, uh, JSON, I mean, whenever I want to import a new compound, in a simulation outside Kemsep database, uh, DWC will, will ask me for a JSON file. So that is the reason I am importing the compound as a JSON file. Okay. So let me save the file now as a JSON file. Okay. So I have uh, entered the name of the compound as isoforon. And then if I save the compound, my uh, JSON file will get saved. 
I can also save this file as a dwsim uh, file. So how do I save this file, whole file? I can just, uh, so uh, just like how we save a simulation file as .dwxml file, we can save a compound file also as .dwcsd file, okay? So let, later, if you want to revisit this file and change some properties, or if you have got the experimental data and I want to input it once again in this compound, I can open that dwcsd file and uh, go and import, I mean, uh, input those data, okay? So I am I'm saving the file right now as a compound creator study file and the file gets saved. Okay. So now let us uh, create a new simulation and see as to how this compound can be used in a simulation. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to click on this new process simulation model. Mm, so you see the simulation configuration wizard. I click on next. Now here, uh, if I search for, uh, if I search for the compound ISO 4 on, I don't know. Okay, so the compound was not here. Okay, so what we'll do? We'll now add the JSON file that we just created. So what I uh, I click on this option called Add from other sources, and then I say Import from JSON file. Okay, so when I when I say that, it will ask me where the JSON file is there. It will ask me to locate the JSON file. So I can uh, locate the JSON file and just say Open. And as soon as I click on Open, you can see the compound has now been imported to my simulation. Okay. And it says that the database source database is a user. So it, it means that this is this is coming from a user defined uh, compound. This is a user defined compound. It is coming from a user database. All right. Now, uh, so I can just click on this and then uh, I can I can add some thermodynamic property package. Let's say I add something called NRTL and then I click on next and then I finish this. Now, yes. So once I've done that, if I uh, drag and drop a material stream, uh, once I drag and drop a material stream, I see that yes, uh, isoforon is working successfully. Uh, now, I don't know if this is going to work throughout the, if I want to do a distillation column, if I want to do an absorption column, if this compound will work or not is something that we'll have to see when we use the compound. Okay, because uh, it might happen that uh, the data sometimes are sufficient and therefore you can proceed with the simulation, but sometimes the data is not sufficient and therefore you can't proceed with the simulation. Okay, and uh, then you have to go back and then search for some more data like, you know, the, you'll have to, might be, you'll have to search for the uh, vapor pressure versus temperature data, uh, enthalpy, I mean, CP versus temperature data, and then only you can perform simulation further. Okay, but uh, at least this is how you can, uh, uh, import new compounds which are not available as a part of DWSIM database. So maybe uh, what you can do is, you know, uh, uh, you can uh, think of a compound, you can search a compound, first of all, which is not there in the DWSIM database. Okay. And then probably you can see how you can, you can give it a try of importing that compound on your own and try to perform some simulation and see if it works. So this is all that I had to demonstrate about the compound creation tool. Uh, also, yes, another thing is that now, let's say I want to uh, modify certain, uh, let's say, you know, I, I, I realized that after importing my compound, I realized that uh, my boiling point was wrong while I imported the compound. So how do I change it? Okay. So every time it is not advised to go back to uh, open the compound creator study file and change their import the JSON file once again and work, that is not something that is advised. So what I can simply do is if you go to this option called tools, and then you say that pure component property viewer or editor, okay? So if I click on this pure component property viewer or editor, I can see that, you know, uh, pure component properties and uh, the compound name is shown here as isoforon. So what I can do is uh, I can first of all enable the constant property editing by clicking on this button at the uh, bottom of this window, which says enable constant property editing. And once I do that, then what I can do is I can, uh, you know, uh, I can enter new, I can enter new uh, values here, or I can edit some values. Let's say I want to enter the, I want to change the boiling point from 486 to 490. So I can do that here. So I can do 490 and then I press on enter. As soon as I pressed on enter, it said, it says that the data is modified. Okay. So uh, if I want to go back to the default value, I can just click on this option. Okay. Or else, uh, if you want to save this now, this new file can also be saved as a JSON file. So once I've done that, I can click on export to JSON and then I, uh, you know, I can export the file from here also as a JSON file. 
Okay, so this is all that I had to demonstrate about the compound creator tool. So are there any questions? Sir, what if uh, the compound we want to add is uh, not there in the database given in compound yes, editor sir. tool? Yes, so what you have to do in that case is firstly, uh, then then our problem, I mean, then it becomes much more difficult in that case. So what we generally do is, uh, what I recommend to do is, first of all, then you uh, do a, uh, you do a, comp a study of the compound and see how you can break the compound into those sub molecules. Okay. And uh, probably you uh, add those unifac structure, you add the unifac uh, contribution of the compound and try to estimate the properties and see if that works. Okay. So in that case, it's all, it all comes down to a manual work where you'll have to, first of all, find out that what are the subgroups or sub molecules present in the compound. Let's say you'll have to find out what, how many CH3 groups are present, how many CH2 groups are present. You can specify if the groups are ring group, if the groups are non ring group. Okay. Uh, and then probably you'll have to see and uh, estimate the data and see if the data is, if the data coming is fine or not, if they're, if they if their results are as per your expectation or not. Okay, sir. Uh, Priyam, uh, here, uh, do you want to, you know, this is something that we have been thinking about with uh, uh, Professor Narain actually proposing. Can we crowdsource and collect data and uh, augment the database? This is something that Professor Narain yes, had said. Um, we can even ask him to say a few words in case he's available, uh, but that will be something very interesting to the participants here. I don't see Naren sir here, so yeah, he might even be uh, in transit. But uh, in case he is available, you can invite him to say a few words. Yeah, let but me if just what, what he said. That is also okay. Try calling him. If he's not there, you uh, give your interpretation based on. I think you had a discussion with him about this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just first see if I can get him. Yeah, just two minutes. You call him. If he's not there, you can. Uh, Continue yourself. So, uh, Naren sir is joining. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I was just demonstrating, uh, I was just, I just gave a demonstration on the uh, compound creation tool in DWSIM. Okay. And uh, Kannan sir brought up the topic that uh, he just said that, you know, we had a uh, idea that, you know, how we can uh, crowdsource this compound creation work and how you can get along more how you can bring more compounds to dwsm database okay so he, he just wanted you to come and just share your idea i mean your thoughts on this as to how this can be done now that we have so many uh, academicians and students here okay 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 yeah that's fine Arin, you uh, uh, we can do crowdsourcing uh, okay what what is it you had in mind you can just uh, share your thoughts okay okay yeah um, so uh, now, if, with your uh, experience of just uh, two days of DWSIM, you might have noticed that there are not all the compounds that one can aspire or one is looking for probably. So that means we need to create compounds. Now, this creation of compounds uh, is a simple activity, but then we need to make, uh, find the coefficients or the group, uh, uh, the interaction parameters and then create this compound creation file. So one idea which I had uh, uh, suggested earlier to Professor Kandan is that, now let's say uh, ethyl benzene is not available, right? Somebody can offer to make this custom create compound file for ethyl benzene. Now, once that is accepted, it is same like anything, uh, any other process flow sheeting or a textbook companion project. So uh, the participant has to raise the request so the FOSI team will check whether this compound is already available or not. But if this compound is not available, uh, then that means the request will be sanctioned. And after this request is accepted, uh, that particular student or a, uh, or, or, or a FOSI enthusiast, rather I will put, can create a, a custom compound file for ethyl benzene. You need to search for the appropriate thermodynamic or the model coefficients uh, from available literature, if those are available, and maybe at least any one or a few set of critical properties should be matched with your compound creation file. Now, this could be as simple as critical temperature, critical pressure or something, or using this compound creation file, uh, you can check for the latent heat of vaporization 
uh, versus temperature data. If this is available as an experimental data in journal papers, then that can be compared with this uh, compound new custom compound creation. And this can be submitted uh, as an FOSI uh, uh, project or as a FOSI activity. So that's that's what. And because this is now FOSI activity, this compound creation file will be available for download for any person. So if somebody say is looking for ethyl benzene and they know that it is not available in uh, the native DWC, all they have to do is they have to come back to the FOSI DWC. Download this uh, custom compound file from FOSI DWSIM and just uh, add on to their database. That's all, right? And it's validated with whatever minimal experimental data that is available. Uh, so that gives a credibility for the custom compound uh, file uh, that is being created. Uh, so that that was primarily the idea. Yes, sir. So over to you. Uh, is that fine? No, this is something that we need to validate. The idea is uh, generally okay, but one of the things people would like to know, this is definitely the need of the hour. Uh, yeah. The only thing is if you know that a lot of data are available experimentally in ChemEng data and journals like that. Yeah. Uh, um, if you have some uh, uh, examples, then that is the first way, uh, that's the way to get started. Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, as you rightly said, the Journal of Chemical Engineering Data has experimental data points, right? They may be the experimental uh, data points of pure component properties. I mean, they might have reported like densities, viscosities, latent heat of vaporization, so on and so forth. Or we can also have preliminary VLE data will be available, right? So and they, they would have also told about which model they have fitted also this experimental data might be available. Now, whoever is creating the compound file has to create a compound file for that and then use that experimental data points on obviously uh, we can cite that reference, the journal paper and then compare and then show that, that the custom compound created in DW sim file is able to appreciably predict the available experimental data or estimate the experimental data. Okay. Right. Something we have to uh, yeah, and I think uh, there is a session on uh, data tuning uh, also, right? Is that over, uh, I think, Priyam, the data tuning no, session? Sir. No, no, sir. Data okay. regression tool, it's a tomorrow. Yeah, so maybe then if this data regression tool, uh, uh, I mean, the session is also over, then uh, obviously the participants who wants to create the compound file can make use of this tool, which is available already in DWC, try to use the experimental data, tune it, find the coefficients and their own coefficients which have now fitted can be used in this compound creation file also. So that is also possible. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but we, this is something we have to work on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Priyam, uh, over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for those inputs. Uh, we'll certainly will try to come up with a plan and see how this can be done. Uh, they have been thinking for this long time. Uh, is there anybody who has any uh, comments on this uh, topic? It's an important topic. So if there is anything, we can uh, spend a couple of minutes. Otherwise, we'll go to the next uh, program. Okay. So I don't uh, think any comments are coming. 